Rebecca, I love talking to you as a philosopher, but I'm going to ask you questions and put your novelist uh, hat on, or maybe put your no novelist body <laughs> on, because it's such a, a, a fully encompassing thing. And when you look at the creative process and uh, sensing the, as the pure aesthetics of what you do, uh, and, and put yourself in that frame, and then with a bit of an out-of-body experience uh, as the philosopher, as the scientist, look at that person. Uh, what do you see? Yeah, so I have a very, very strong, you know, aesthetic sense, right, that I obviously would have to, 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 to be a novelist. And um, I, uh, I think about this a lot. I think about the question of aesthetic realism, you know, that can arise. I mean, is, is beauty something um, independent of, you know, of our psychology. It, the question arises in ethics, of course, mm -hmm. um, whether or not, you know, explaining our ethical intuitions dissolves the objectivity of ethical intuitions. And I, I tend to, I'm an, a realist when it comes to ethics, and I tend to be a realist when it comes to aesthetics as well. Um, what, you know, what does that mean, realism you know, in aesthetics? In aesthetics, that, uh, that when we make our judgments of beauty, mm -hmm. um, we're making objective, uh, objective uh, judgments. I, I'm very hesitant of this. You know and that it's not a, just a. Uh, we can offer an evolutionary explanation for why certain things seem beautiful to us. Um, you know why certain scenes. You know scenes that uh, involve water. Um, seem very, very beautiful to us, or the sound of water seems very, very beautiful uh, to us, and we can explain uh, the psychology that evolved on the hunter-gatherer, right, in the Pleistocene um, era, so, you know, we're water, we're all looking for water, and so that was very desirable, and so it seems beautiful to us, and so give a very naturalist evolutionary explanation. Sort of a just-so kind of story. I mean, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, but it's, you know, yes, but, you know, it's, we, we can, we can um, you know, our, our psychology is very much a result of, uh, of natural selection so that we can try to work back and give a, natu a, a, a naturalist explanation for these things. But, you know, for certain aspects of beauty, um, I wonder if, you know, it's the reason that we find them so beautiful is because they're beautiful. Um, yeah. And I find, that, I find that very, very strongly in, um, interestingly, not so much in art, where the naturalist explanations offer themselves to me, um, but in mathematics, right? I am a right. sucker right. for mathematical beauty. Yeah. I always have been. When you can see uh, you get that chill when a when a proof is so elegant and is so beautiful. Um, the the yeah. sense that it simply is, yeah. and that we use that sense of aesthetic beauty, of the aesthetic reality of that beauty, to guide us in our exploration of reality. Um, but you know that 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 itself um, you know, seems to point to a sort of objectivity of the, of the beauty itself. The famous equation E equals MC squared, which everybody throws off their, their uh, tongue as uh, ex exemplifying the modern world and all of that. I mean, if you think about it, the mass and energy, which is the total universe related by the square of the speed of light. Yeah, and, and yeah that we get, yes. it. I mean, it's chilling, as you it said. It is, and, and space and time unified into one picture, and so all this diverse. You no, know, you could say, well, you know what, it, it, it's of use to us to be able to understand the universe. That, this is certainly true. It's of use to us to be able to co uh, to coalesce as many diverse phenomena Let's as possible to the, to the naturalist, right? You know, I mean, so there, that's always battling in my head, you know, that there is, okay, there's probably a naturalist way of explaining these things and explaining away uh, the beauty, but... I'm not entirely convinced of that. All right, so let's explore about that from the naturalist point of view. That obviously is a co-development of the evolution of our of our environment and ourselves with the evolution of our brain and our capacity to do it, and that would make beauty or aesthetics a very much a relativistic exactly. kind of thing. Exactly. Exactly. Contingent upon the accidents of evolution, both uh, in the evolution of, of the human species and particularly of our brain. Yes, yes, uh, But yes. then when you look at mathematics, 
that is so independent. I mean, E equals MC squared was true even if there were, weren't a, any evolution or people. Yeah, and that the way we got to it was being guided by our sense of beauty, um, that that's how we got to it. And in some sense, it's, it's not even mathematical. The, the, the theory of natural selection itself is so beautiful. Right, right. Um, it is, you know, such an, that, that sense of explanatory elegance yes, right. um, that, you know, just, uh, you, you can't help but be, it, it, you're moved by it. Um, you know, when, when, when Darwin says at the, at the end of The Origin of Species that, you know, there is a grandeur in this view of things. And there, there is, you know, the, it's that same as that uh, Nabokov, the great uh, novelist, talks about the um, hairs at the back of your neck rising mm -hmm. in the presence of beauty. And mm -hmm. he's talking, of course, about literary beauty or, you know, artistic beauty. But it's the same thing with explanatory beauty, you know, the, the, a, a kind of physiological reaction to it. The reaction is the same, but, that, but that's my question. Is yeah. it the same? Yeah. Is, is the aesthetics of science and mathematics yeah. and that elegance, which is, which is called beauty, and rightly so, yes. but it's called beauty generally because it's simple and small and, and works together, but when we use that term in art and in literature, is yes. then that more culturally and, and, uh, or, or and species dependent? Species dependent, yeah. Right. I I, mean, that it, is it, where I, I, I also feel I'm, I'm completely satisfied for, with the naturalist explanations uh, when they're applied to art, um, but um, less so for the, when they're applied to these theoretical notions that we that we use in order to even arrive at the right, right, naturalist right. explanations right, of art. Right. It's not, strictly speaking, circularity, but if we, if we didn't have this independent notion of theoretical mm, beauty, mm. we would have never have gotten to the naturalist explanations in the first place, right? So that it's some, you know, can it be argued uh, away <laughs> using them? I don't know. You know, I haven't really worked it out. All I know is, you know, that um, it seems to me uh, when I re when I when I when I see a beautiful explanation. Um, you know, I should say that you know I was I was brought up in a very very um, orthodox Jewish home, and I was sent to an extremely orthodox Jewish school. And we, but it was accredited, this school. It was in New York City and it was accredited. And we were not even supposed to go on to college. Um, and, uh, but because it was accredited, we had to take the New York Regents exam. And um, when I took biology, the principal came in the first day and said, you're gonna have to learn this for the Regents exam, learn it and forget it. <laughs> it's, it, it contradicts the Torah girl, little girls, forget it. And I, learn this theory and I, the, 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 the hairs in the back of my neck grows. It's like the beauty of this explanation, the, the coherence that it accorded to the world um, just moved me tremendously and changed, you know, it changed my life. Uh, I, 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 I had to go on in science. So, you know, I, I think because of experiences like this, I'm, I believe in the objective beauty of, of these sorts of uh, theoretical aspects of the world.